guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another episode of Echo. I can't wait to delve deeper into this. Some of my uh, subscribers have told me that it's quite wild. The further you get into it, so I'm here to decide. I mean, I don't. I'm not entirely sure if this is like uh, romance or maybe like horror mystery. Maybe it's a bit of uh, all of that. I believe that's my character right there. I think he's an otter. That's a doggo of some description. She looks like a... Possibly a dingo? Uh, not... Oh, uh, God. Uh, Lynx. I think Lynx. Ram. Um, oh. Gila monster? That's what that coloration reminds me of. Anyway, guys, let's jump right into it. Let's do it right there. All right. Okay. <clears throat> and the character here. Carl's starting to lose that faraway look as he narrows his eyes. You should! You went for what? A semester? That's not really enough time to tell if you're really cut out for college. Classes get easier to handle once you get used to it. Yeah, well, it wasn't exactly the schoolwork that was the problem. You could try smoking less weed. That might help. Uh, wh what? Is this... What, was I set up for intervention or something? Carl looks over at me as if asking for help. Hey, don't look at me. I had to deal with them for the past ten hours. Yeah, I, I guess I forgot just how naggy they can be. That's because we care about you, Carl. Anyway, I'm pretty sure Chase has been missing you ever since you left school. Carl and I were in the same class throughout school. As a result, we entered college together. We even roomed together for, for that one semester, which was a lot of fun. Of course, I had missed him. Carl seems pretty eager to get off the topic, though. Speaking of school, did you, did you get accepted to Weston, Jenna? Yep, going into experimental psych. I start in the fall. That's pretty cool. Congrats. Carl turns back to me. And you're into journalism, right? He looks over the equipment, looking confused. What's all this? Oh, yeah, one of the reasons why I'm out here. I'm doing a new segment on Echo. Sounds like the feel-good movie of the year, Chase. That's what you get out. That's what you get out of the feel-good downtown. That's what you blah. I am my my words. They fail me. That's what you get out of the feel-good town of the century, Carl. Heh, <laughs> Yeah. Carl scratches his muzzle before turning to TJ. And you're doing what again? Sports, something, Bible Olympics? Athletic training, but yes, it's a Christian school. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Carl gives a, thumb, a thumbs up. Super. So we're going to eat? I'm hungry as hell. Hell is a little extreme there, Carl. Not even you can be that hungry, heh. <laughs> mm-hmm, sure. Where's Leo? He's bringing the sandwiches, right? He actually just texted me that he's here. He was picking up Flynn. So we're all gonna be here. Just like old times! TJ almost looks like that little kid links again, his ears twitching around with excitement. Oh, there they are! I grip the bedspread and watch as Carl moves around the corner to open the door. I hear it open, followed by the distinctive, deep, brassy voice of Flynn. Hey, why are you getting the door, fatty? To get my sandwiches, dick face. I've got the munchies like a mother. Er, where are they? Leo has them. Here he is. Hey, they all in there? My heart skips a beat and my tail thumps the bed as I hear, as I hear Leo's high baritone. There's some bustling before they start coming around the corner, bringing me face to face with the rest of my childhood friends. Flynn comes first, slinking in casually, his posture loose and relaxed, slouching. I like Carl, though. This is good music. His slouch, ma his slouch makes him look like he just doesn't give a fuck, as opposed to just trying to make himself seem smaller. He wasn't a shy guy, as evidenced by his open shirt. And who you callin' a dick face? Flynn knocks Carl on the head, which made a loud thunking sound, but Carl just grins throughout. Hey, Jenna, TJ, Chase. 
He nods to each of us in turn, rubbing his knuckles. Immediately following him, his arms wrapped around two big brown paper bags, is Leo. He smiles over the tops of the bags, sweeping the room with his eyes along with his, ta with his tall rectangular ears. He pauses on Jenna, then TJ before finding me. His face immediately breaks into a full-on grin as he walks over to the bed I'm sitting on, setting down the bags. As he comes to a stop in front of me, I reach out my paw to slap his, like I did with Carl. Instead, he grabs it to yank me right up into a tight bear hug, nearly squeezing the air out of me. Chase! Man, I missed you. Just like Carl, it seems like Leo's gotten bigger and stronger. He lifted me up without even trying. The tension I've been feeling in my chest melts away like an ice cube on an echo sidewalk. Everything's fine. All of that worry about how he was going to react was for nothing. The hug is lasting kind of long, though. I can feel everyone else looking at us. And just like that, he forgets we exist. Leo finally does pull back, then smacking me on the shoulder before turning to greet TJ and Jenna. I shakily sit back down, feeling a whole lot better now that the introductions are out of the way. Fuck! Leave Carl in a room for five seconds and it smells like a goddamn skunk, scon son skunk sauna. The weed is just oozing out of your pores at this point. Flynn theatrically plugs his nostrils as he pulls the window open a crack. Carl rolls his eyes, slouching further and jamming his paws in his pockets. Oh, shut up. I think everyone here agrees that my smell is a lot better than your shedding. Nothing like leaving a big pile of lizard dust on the couch for the next person. And by the way, dude, that skunk comment was speciesist. And that lizard comment wasn't? Flynn turns to me, fanning Aaron from the outside with his hand. <laughs> What's worse, Chase, Carl smell or my dusting off? Ha! Dusting off? That's not a thing. Try saying white flakes that chip off of me with every step I take, except when I scratch my ass. That's like a fucking blizzard of dead skin. And some of it might land in your mouth. That's what you should call it. Hey, you furballs do it too. It's just less noticeable. Either way, it's hot in here. Aren't you cold-blooded? Someone turned down the goddamn thermostat. Somebody turn down your language, ha! Huh? TJ says it to him like a cheerful kindergarten teacher pep-talking a student into using his words. They stare at each other for about five seconds, Flynn's expression like a stone, while TJ slowly loses his smile. Uh... Well, Jesus butt-fucking Christ, I'll be sure to watch that. Flynn! <laughs> TJ actually looks pretty upset, but Flynn just reaches out and yanks him into a chokehold. The much shorter looks easily dwarfed by the lizard. Ah, shut up, you priss. I'm just kidding. TJ half-heartedly fights the hold. I guess TJ thought he'd get some respect now that we're all adults. Hey, ow! Y you still said it. Normally I might step in to help, but it's been a while since I've seen Flynn and TJ go at it. It's just too funny to stop. Look, no lightning. So much, of your m so much for your almighty go oof! TJ jabs his elbow back into Flynn's stomach, doubling the lizard over for a second. Ha! See? God works in a mysterious way. Ow! Flynn reaches up and grabs at one of the tufts on TJ's ears and yanks, earning a yowl from the feline. Foul! Species Features! Species Features was something we made up to make our tussles a little more fair. <laughs> it involved any distinct physical difference between our species that might pose as a disadvantage, like my tail, Jenna's ears, or TJ's ear tufts. Carl was especially keen on it, being a ram. His horns were often used as leverage against him. TJ, come on, get your sandwich. TJ finally yanks himself out of Flynn's grasp, smoothing down his fur as he tries to look as dignified as possible. Well, I can see things haven't changed. With that, TJ walks over to the table to get his food. I can't help but laugh. Heh. <laughs> I think TJ won that one by technicality. Or did he? He might have fouled, too. Flynn's got a soft lizard belly. Ha. Flynn snorts, rubbing his stomach. Oh, don't even try to tell me about soft, asshole. It looks like you swallowed a beach ball. Speaking of which, food! 
Oh, I love the way all these people interact with each other. We all pass the bags around to get our food. A chicken sandwich for Jenna and TJ, roast beef for me and Leo, and three large veggie burgers that almost take up their own bag for Carl. Flynn, as usual, isn't eating anything. I think it's a lizard thing. I keep my seat on the bed as I unwrap the foil around my stomach, around my sandwich. The smell, the smell wafts up from the beef, making my mouth water and bringing some memories up with it. We'd all spent many nights at the old diner. I can remember the night me and Carl graduated. Leo took us all straight from Peyton High to the diner, skipping out on, on the all-night graduation party for sandwiches and milkshakes. That sounds like fun. I take a huge bite and a yellow bell pepper slips out the other end, landing back in the foil. Whoa, slow down, you're going to choke. Suddenly I'm almost falling over to the side as something heavy plants itself next to me on the bed. I quickly grab a napkin and bring it to my muzzle, wiping away the grease. Hey, Leo. Leo chuckles at my embarrassment and unwraps his own sandwich. Yeah, sorry if the bread is a little soggy. Garobo over here took his sweet time getting to the car. Hey! Working in the town hall is serious business. I don't have a family business I can just waltz out of like you. Hey, Flynn. I bet, I bet you that you can eat that I can eat this whole burger in one minute. Is that a fucking joke? Of course you can. <laughs> yeah, but what about two burgers? <sighs> Don't choke, Carl. I decide to keep the conversation on Leo's job, since that's the whole reason why he's still here. Is business still pretty good? Yes, Peyton is getting bigger, so is the number of customers. I guess it's a good thing your dad moved it out of the Echo, huh? For sure. For sure. The place is turning into a ghost town. It's probably, it probably will be in another decade or two. By some standards, it already is. I take another bite of my sandwich, biting right into another bell pepper. I'd forgotten how good the diner food is. I notice TJ sitting next to Jenna at the table, picking unhappily at his lettuce-wrapped chicken. Jenna seems to as well as she leans towards him. What's wrong, TJ? It's just... never mind, it doesn't matter. Are you sure? It's just the mayo. I forgot they put it on everything here. <laughs> Jenna lifts up the bun on her sandwich, inspecting its contents. Hmm, none of the mayo really got on my chicken. Here. No, you don't have... Jenna picks up TJ's sandwich and swaps out his grilled chicken. She rips off the layer of mayo-tainted lettuce from his lettuce from his lettuce bun before swapping her chicken in. All right, guys, that's where I'm gonna pause it. Oh, uh, the banter between the banter between this group is a little more adult than the other game, so <laughs> I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot, a lot more cursing. But it's fine. I'm up for it. I've got a few friends that I'm kind of like that with. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to do more of this playthrough of Echo. Uh, if you can, go check it out. It's on itch.io and Patreon. But anyway, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!